Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Welcome to Saturday. And I'm not sure why my head is being cut off here a little bit on the webcam. But anyways, if you're on Instagram and joining me, you'll obviously see my whole entire beautiful face. Just kidding. That's not why you're here. Um, what's up, Richard? Good to see you, buddy. I uh, wanted to, I'm just doing some work this morning and I had this uh, this idea that I wanted to share with you guys, which is the major difference between a brick and mortar and a virtual practice, okay? Uh, Sam, what's going on? Chef Delarain, what is happening? Hope you're doing great. Um, so there's, so we help, we help practitioners uh, both on both sides, right? Brick and mortar as well as virtual. Uh, chiropractors, naturopaths, functional medicine doctors, physical therapists, dietitians, like you name it. As long as you're the owner of a practice, um, that's, that's kind of our wheelhouse. However, uh, depending on what the focus is, if the focus is on building the virtual practice, right, so online mostly, or if the focus is on brick and mortar, uh, very different strategies. And I want to tell you why that's the case. And this is also why it's very important to have context for anything that you're doing in your business, right? Because if you look at someone's business model or you look at their business, and you're like, I'm going to just copy what they're doing. You have to keep in mind what the objective is, what the context is around that situation. And that's what I wanna share with you and give you some insight about in this video, in this episode. The number one difference between brick and mortar and virtual is the word trust. Okay, I want you to write that down and I want you to put it in bold on your walls and really remember this because the, the, there's something magical that happens when people walk into your clinic, right? That trust, that bond is built almost instantaneously. And the challenge with building a virtual uh, virtual practice or an online business is that that trust, that bridge, and I don't know what my, my camera is so weird in the focusing here. Um, the bridge to, 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 to bridge that trust gap is a lot bigger online. And that's because people don't, for whatever reason, people think everyone online is a scammer. Uh, they think they're gonna take their money and run. There's all sorts of barriers, right? So just know that building a virtual practice is infinitely harder than a brick and mortar. There's new skill sets that need to be acquired, that need to be built, that need to be developed. Marketing, sales at a much higher level virtually than in person. In person, most practice owners get busy and successful in spite of themselves. We ask, I would say 95% of people we speak with, how do you currently get patients? And all of them say word of mouth. Here's the thing, word of mouth isn't a marketing strategy, right? It's not, a, it's not a strategy. It's, whoa, like things just fell into my lap. And that's great while it lasts, but when stuff like COVID hits and you don't have the right systems or strategies in place, that becomes a really, really big issue, right? So if you guys are just joining in, what's going on? Thank you for taking a couple moments with me on this Saturday. We're talking about the major difference between brick and mortar and virtual, and that key difference is trust. Brick and mortar, when you walk in, when you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone, belly-to-belly, face-to-face, that trust is inherently built a lot faster than it is over the phone or even via the web. And that's the major thing you have to consider. Now, why does that matter and how does that impact your systems and strategies? Specifically, what this is gonna impact is how you market and sell. So in our world, virtually, we recommend every single one of our clients build a perfect client pipeline, right? That's what we call our four-step process. We've been doing that for years. It's how we've built Healthpreneur. It's how we've helped, you know, more than a thousand um, entrepreneurs in the health space build their online businesses now. And it's the same for every single one of them, right? And, and yes, there are different ways of building a business. There's many ways to skin a cat. But what we've recognized is that this is the most effective way. And what it looks like is really simple. Facebook ad, webinar, application, phone call, right? Those are the four steps. Now you can go and you can go ahead and try those on your own, but the reality is that you're probably not gonna succeed because the magic is in the nuances, the magic is in the details, and that's where we go deep with our clients every single day. So why do we use a webinar online? And I'll, and I'll get to that in a second, but why don't we recommend a webinar for brick and mortar? So let me ask, let me ask, let me answer this question in reverse. So why I don't recommend a webinar type of funnel for a brick and mortar is that the webinar's purpose is to build trust and credibility and build desire and 
we don't need to do that as much in a brick and mortar setting because if you can get someone to physically get out of their own inertia of not wanting to go somewhere and walk into your clinic, half the battle is won. So you don't have to get them to jump through hoops. There's more of a direct way to the end result, if you will, with a brick and mortar, which is simply just to get them to show up in your clinic. Now, there's obviously things you can do between the time they call and book an appointment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to build their desire and you know the authority that you have, credibility, all that kind of stuff, so that when they do walk in, they're ready to go. But the thing is, using a webinar type of funnel is not what you want to do. I mean, it, you know, ironically, a lot of our clients still run a webinar funnel for the brick and mortar, um, and it works, but there are faster ways to fill the practice than having people go through a webinar. So the reason we use a webinar online is because we need that time to spend with the prospects. There's a saying, and I can't remember where I heard this, if it was from Dan Kennedy or someone else. Um, the person, the marketer who spends, the, in Dan Kennedy's words, the marketer who spends the most time with the prospect is going to win the prospect's business. Does that make sense? So if you spend more time, if you're, prospects have more time with you, they are more likely to do business with you than someone else they spend less time with. So online, the best way to do that is to have people commit their attention through their time. And that's why we use a webinar. So a webinar is an online presentation, 45 to 60 minutes, sometimes even longer. And the purpose is to get people to spend their time with you because people invest, the number one currency that we all have now other than money is attention. So if in, think of this, brick and mortar, person drives in their car across the city or across the block and they come into your practice. They've taken time out of their day to do that. If you think of that whole process, right? Time to get in the car, time to go to the clinic, time to go for an assessment, all that other stuff, that's probably gonna be about an hour. Online, how do we replicate that? Well, we're not gonna get the best results by having someone download a free PDF, okay? Quick in, quick out. Like, yeah, they'll, they'll opt in, but the quality of those leads is infinitely lower because there's low commitment. And there's this, uh, on. it's not a debate, it's, it's not a debate. There, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of experts out there talking about make it easy for people to say yes. And I do believe that to a degree, but you have to keep in context what this, uh, what the environment is like, right? If the goal online is to build trust with people, it's a lot more challenging to do so if you're getting people to opt in for a free cheat sheet because it's easy for them to get in. There's very little commitment. There's very little attention to that. They're just, they probably won't even check their email for the download. And as a result, they're not as invested in you and your business and in their ultimate outcome. And that's why we use a webinar. Yes, it decreases conversions a bit, right? Fewer people will opt in for a webinar because they don't want to watch it as opposed to downloading a one-page PDF. But that's great because you only want people who are committed to the outcome. So in a virtual setting, we have to get people jumping through hoops because you don't want to spend time on the phone speaking with unqualified tire kickers, right? All of us want committed patients. We all want committed clients. If you want committed people on the back end, you need to make sure the invitation on the front end is going to ensure they're committed. Is this making sense? I hope it is. So virtually, you have to get people committed, and that's why we recommend what we call a perfect client pipeline, which is largely based around one webinar that's recorded once and it runs evergreen. So it's not a live webinar you do every day. You record it once and it works for you 24 seven. I don't speak on stage anymore. I mean, I don't really need to. I don't want to, to be honest. Like the last time I spoke on stage, I think it was about a year and a half ago, I was invited to speak out at the Nutritional Therapy Association conference in Port, uh, Portland, I think. Really great event. And it did, I mean, we did really well with it. But I started, like, when I'm looking at the time it took to get there, we had two team members with me three days away from my family. You know, it was good for business. But the reality is, like, I probably could have got the same results by doing nothing sitting at home with my kids. And that's the power of having an automated, dialed in system. The keyword is system. See, a system is an ensemble of moving parts that produces an outcome 
without any reliance on anyone in, sorry, without reliance on any single person. If you think of McDonald's, right? Like why is McDonald's so big? Because what they did is they said, we want to create a system where we can hire a 15 year old or a 50 year old with zero know-how of making a burger and show them exactly how to do it. We're gonna fry it for one and a half minutes on this side. We're gonna flip it one and a half minutes on this side. When you put it in the bun, it's gonna be this first, then this, then this, boom. They have it down to a science. And now they're replacing people in the restaurants with iPads where you can just touch in your order. That is a business, that's a system, okay? If we look at the flip side of a McDonald's, let's look at a, uh, a mom and pop burger shop, right? Where the owner is the cook making the burgers. And we've all been to these places, right? Like, it, there, I think there's an element of nostalgia here where, you know, like the, the craftsman, the, the chef is like, I started my restaurant, I make the burgers myself. And that's amazing, right? Maybe it's the best burger in town and you love going there for the experience. We all love those types of restaurants, right? But here's the challenging part for the business owner. When he's not making the burgers, no one's making the burgers. And if he doesn't have a system for exactly how he makes the patty, exactly how long it cooks for, exactly how it's layered on the bun, and all the specifics, then he doesn't have a business. He has a job because he can't step away from that. So the reason McDonald's and Starbucks, for instance, are so powerfully, um, are so powerful is because they have predictability. Predictability of the results, predictability of the process, but also as the consumer, whether or not you go to McDonald's here or wherever you live or across the world, it's the same finished product. A Big Mac is a Big Mac and you know that. If you get a latte at Starbucks here or a latte at Starbucks in Belgium, it's the same thing. People love certainty, they love predictability, and you can only create that with systems. So in your practice, you need to have the right systems that make you less relevant to the outcomes in your business. I hope that makes sense. So when you create a webinar, what this does is you record yourself in a very specific way, not yourself, but you know, a slide deck for instance. You create the presentation, you record it, and now it runs 24 seven. So right now as I'm, watch, as I'm doing this for you, our webinar is being watched by hundreds of people. I don't even know them, right? But that's, that's the beauty of the systems. I don't have to be there sharing this information with them every single day. I don't need to jump on the speaking circuit and play that whole narcissistic ego boosting game of like, yeah, I spoke on stage, but I never see my family, right? I don't need to do any of that stuff because I have a system that does that for me. I have a virtual stage that everyone in North America, US, UK, Australia, New Zealand are coming to my stage because we run Facebook ads to those specific people to bring them into my stage to watch my webinar on my terms. And every single one of our clients is able to do that as well and you can do that as well. And that's the beautiful thing about this. And if you love speaking on stage, and you wanna do that whole thing, that's totally cool. But it's actually a lot better to do that when you know you have a system and a machine working for you in spite of all that. So that you, your, your livelihood and your lead generation doesn't rely on you trading time for money or traveling across the world or the country to speak on stage. And a lot of times, here's the big thing too. Good luck speaking on stage where the audience is gonna be your perfect client or patient every single time. Now, the beautiful thing about a perfect client pipeline is your ads are only shown to your perfect clients or patients. So you're only ever bringing the perfect people into your world who you know you can help. So why would you wanna go anywhere else, right? Why would you wanna travel around and speak on stage? Now, I know I'm getting, a bit of a, getting off on a bit of a tangent. So we do this because we need to build trust. We need to get people committed and we do that by having them invest their attention, their time, before they're able to invest their money with us. Virtually, that's what we do. Brick and mortar, there are other systems, other marketing strategies that are a lot quicker to the point. I'm not gonna get into them here. Um, but the beautiful thing about a brick and mortar is that you can fill your brick and mortar very quickly. I'm talking about within 30 days, like you can fill it to the rim very quickly 
by using the right marketing systems. Now, if you don't know what those are, well, you're gonna have to rely on word of mouth, right? Or doctor referrals. But here's the, here's the thing is the locus of control of your business is not in your hands. The locus of control of your future, think about this, this is insane. 95% of people we speak with, right? Practice owners, how do you get your patients? Oh, like word of mouth and doctor referrals. That's horrible. You're the locus of control of your future is in hope and pray, maybe some people will talk about us, or that one doctor down the street, or that one hospital down the street, or one or two, right? That's, I don't know about you, but that's not very good. I was actually speaking with a client of ours who's a chiropractor in Sacramento last week, and we're just kind of catching up uh, with everything uh, post-COVID and stuff, and he was saying that one of his, one of the insurance companies that was 80% of his insurance was going through this one company, they dropped him like that. Just overnight, we're no longer covering your patients. That's 80% of his business gone. This is what happens every single day with practice owners and what's very likely happening or could happen to you and your business if you don't have full control over your acquisition and you don't have the right systems and strategies in place where you fully control everything that's happening in your business. Okay, this, see the thing is like people, it's ridiculous, like in our Facebook ads we talk about this and people in the comments leave comments like, yeah, like word of mouth is never gonna go out of style. I'm not, like, it's, it's, it's a stupid comment. Like I'm not saying word of mouth isn't good. It's great, but it's the cherry on top. You can't build a business hoping for word of mouth. And if you do, you don't have a business. Okay, I wanna be very honest about this because COVID, what this whole situation has hopefully reminded you of is that if your, if your business is built on a house of cards, you need one little stress test like COVID for instance and everything falls apart. And a lot of people are speaking with now, whether they're reopening or not, they have now been kicked in the face and recognize that that can never happen again. And now they're taking their business a little bit more seriously to say, okay, what do I have to do now to build the right infrastructure, the right systems, so that when the second wave comes, because it's already coming, okay, it's already happening in the States in some places, that this doesn't happen again. What happens if your business gets locked down again? What happens if the doors say, you know, or the government says, you know what, sorry, we made a mistake, we open up too quickly, Psh, doors are closed, what are you gonna do, right? If you don't have the right systems and strategies built in place, you are gonna have a very, very challenging time with your business. And I'm gonna finish by seeing something that I think is gonna be somewhat controversial and might ruffle a few feathers. Um, a lot of businesses have gone out of business during COVID and a lot of businesses have struggled because of COVID. And I obviously I wanna extend my compassion and sympathies to every business owner, um, but at the same time, I think it's a very good thing that happened, okay? And here's why. So I'll give you an example of two pizza restaurants close to our house. One of them has been around for 40 years, 40, 4 zero, 40 years. And then the other one's been around for maybe half that amount of time. Both very, very reputable within our neighborhoods, very good pizza restaurants. The one that was around for 40 years, they went out of business within two weeks of the lockdown. Within two weeks, they were out of business, doors closed, shut down, bankrupt. The other one is doing just fine. And what this illustrates is that whether we're talking brick and mortar or virtual, whether we're talking about a health practice or a pizza restaurant or an e-commerce store or anything else, there's 20% of businesses that are always doing really well and 80% of them are struggling. Most businesses, whether brick and mortar or virtual, are one month away, usually one month away from going out of business. And when COVID hit, well, what happens is those businesses rise to the surface and they are dusted out, gone. And yes, that sucks. Yes, it impacts their families. Yes, it impacts their livelihood. Yes, it impacts many things. But here's the silver lining, is it's not your fault that COVID happened and it's not your fault that all this stuff happened to you. But here's the thing, it's 100% your responsibility to never let this happen again. So let COVID be a reminder to you to really fix the fundamentals in your business. Because if this ever happens again, and it will, and your business suffers, guess whose fault it is? 
it's all your fault because you didn't take the warning seriously the first time. And because of that, the second time around, you have no one else to blame but yourself. And I know that's whatever it is. I mean, it's, it's in your face. It's, it's very unpopular, but I don't care about being popular. I care about getting you like your head dialed in right, okay? Because most business owners, they're not running businesses. They're running self-employed jobs. And those jobs are gonzo once stuff like this happens. Will, what's up, buddy? Hope you're doing great. Um, we're just talking, just joining in. We're just talking about the difference between brick and mortar and virtual practices. Kind of gone on to a bit of a tangent about the sustainability and foundation of your business during and after COVID and in the best or the worst of economic times. So here's the thing, just bringing this all full circle. The major difference between the two, brick and mortar, you build trust very quickly with people once they walk into your clinic. Virtual, it takes more time and therefore we have to allow that time and understand that that time is gonna take more time and we have to use different strategies to bond with people who don't know, like, and trust you yet or don't believe you, have skepticism, all that kind of stuff before they're willing to do business with you. With that said, you don't need to take months or years for someone to be like, now I'm ready. Although some people will be like that. And that's why we use a perfect client pipeline. It's the fastest way to the end results while still building that commitment and that trust that is so necessary for people to take action with you. In person, things are a lot easier. Things can happen a lot faster. And the last thing about this is just understand that building a virtual business is infinitely harder than building an in-person business initially. And that's because of this idea of, of trust and some of the systems and the skills specifically on the marketing side that need to be dialed in in order for you to get great results. As I said earlier, you can fill your practice if you're doing the right things in a month, like seriously, 30 days or less, we can fill your practice, okay? Virtually, if you've got nothing going on, it's gonna take you a little bit longer, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, and again, depends on your risk tolerance in terms of your ad spend and stuff like that, but generally, it's gonna take a little bit more time. You have to understand that and be realistic about that situation, but also understand that in either situation, brick and mortar or virtual, if you build the right systems and the right foundation, you can build a business that grows to infinite levels independent of your involvement, okay? And if you want help with that, this is what we do every single day of the week, right? And we can likely help you if you're a practice owner who's amazing at what you do and you just wanna build a better business that survives during this time and thrives beyond that, okay? If that's something you want, if you want more patience, if you wanna build a practice that's, that doesn't solely rely on you, and if you wanna really be able to help more people so that you don't have capacity ceilings, like I can only help 40 people a week, for instance, and then your, your, your income is capped, if you wanna be able to break through a bunch of these different molds and really build a great practice, uh, then we can certainly help you if you're the right fit. So in order to, to see if there is a good fit, let's start off by having a conversation. Go to workwithyuri.com, workwithyuri.com, uh, book in a quick chat with us and we'll figure out, hey, where are you at, where you wanna go? We'll look at where are the biggest cracks in your business that need to be sealed right now and we'll put together a game plan for your situation and if you want us to help you deploy that for even faster results, we can talk about that as well. And if not, again, no pressure, no obligation, none of that stuff, right? So uh, go to workwithfury.com, book in a call today. We'll have a quick chat, see if there's a fit, and obviously we'll give you all the information you need to make an informed decision about the best way forward for your business. And if we can help in any way, shape, or form, uh, we'd be delighted to do so, all right? Anyways, so hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this episode has got the wheels turning, and I will see you guys soon.